Chapter number 12 this uh, morning. I want to read you a verse of scripture here. Uh, and I will have to uh, say a couple things about it this morning. Luke chapter number 12. I was reading my Bible the other day. And this scripture just grabbed me as it has many times. And I want to read this scripture to you. And bring you a message on a subject I feel like needs to be preached. Luke chapter 12. And look with me if you will at verse 4. Luke chapter 12, verse 4. Just for a few minutes this morning, listen carefully. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Somebody told me that they said, God don't kill nobody. That shows how much people read their Bible nowadays, ain't it? It said, after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. He killed plenty of people. Sure. In the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, Ananias, Sapphira, sure he does. And um, the Bible said, fear him in the last part of verse five. And I want to preach this morning on the subject, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. A couple of things I got to clear up now before I bring this message. Back in 1932, FDR, that's Franklin D. Roosevelt, 30-something president of the United States, made a statement. That statement has caught on and has went down through history as one of the greatest statements ever made. It's on college campuses. It's in public buildings. It's on plaques. It's in people's bedrooms and living rooms and offices. He got up and he made a statement and he said, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. How many of you ever heard that little statement? That is one of the most ignorant statements that a man ever made. That's totally, completely against the Word of God. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. That man, and everybody went, oh, what great wisdom. Listen, brother, think about that. We're not supposed to be afraid of anything but fear? Now, that hurricane hit the coast yesterday and is hitting it, and I'm supposed to sit there in my house and when I see my car fly off up in the woods, I'm supposed to say I have nothing to fear. The only thing I should be afraid of is getting scared. Fear itself is all I should be afraid of. You, you, people, you get a little statement like that and it's like God helps them, it helps themselves. Somebody comes up with some stupid something like that about every 15 or 20 years and it catches on like uh, we're all God's creatures and I see God in everything. And you know, dumb things like that. God ain't in everything. And we're not all God's creatures. And we do have some stuff. We, I fear rattlesnakes. A snake got in my room the other day. Uh, my editor, I have been like this, and uh, I got a snake in my room. And uh, I've, I've lived there all these years, never had no problem with that. And somebody said, how do you know it was in there? Because the skin fell in the floor. And I said, oh, Lord. And, and uh, I, can't, I was tired that night, so I went on to bed. And... Uh, I, I, most of you know the story. My, my daughter said, Daddy, don't you dare sleep in. I said, well, he didn't bite me last night. Uh, but uh, I'm not supposed to fear that. I have nothing to fear but fear itself. I got me a ladder and climbed up there and crammed mothballs in the hole where the beam goes outside. And uh, about two mornings, a few mornings later, 1.30 in the morning, I heard something go, tick, 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 mothballs hit the floor. <laughs> Whoever said a snake won't cross, cross mothballs will lie to you. He said, move out of the way, mothballs, I'm coming through. And, and came right out, knocked them mothballs out on the floor. So I went to the store, bought me some of that stuff that looks like shaving cream, that it looked like spans, and, and buddy, I shot every hole and filled it up. And then I had big white spots up there that looked like uh, whipped cream. So I went and got brown spray paint and painted it. And, but that snake is not in my room right now that I know of. Uh, I either blocked him in or blocked him out. Ain't heard nothing from him since. I'm not supposed to fear that, according to some people. 
I'm not supposed to fear AIDS or a policeman. Got me right down there the other night. Blue lights come flying up on me. And I said, uh, oh Lord, I have nothing to fear but fear itself. Uh-uh, uh-uh, it went through me. I said, oh my goodness. I was helping this boy, Chris Little, the preacher at Preacher here last, uh, last Sunday night. His son was following me and I was trying to help him get around some people, so I said, I don't ever go speeding right down through there. You're crazy if you do, because they're sitting out there waiting on you right now. A trap from here to exit 103. And uh, uh, they, I, they, he told me, I said, listen, I never speed through here, sir. I was helping this man get off the exit, and he let me go, me and Chase. He let me go. But I'm not supposed to fear that. I'm not supposed to fear anything. Man comes in with a gun, I have nothing to fear but fear itself. That's crazy. The Bible teaches that we should fear God. In the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Bible teaches us to fear God. Uh, they, and, and you even have people attack that doctrine. The Schofield Reference Bible, great Bible, says when it says fear God, it don't really mean fear, it means reverential trust. And you'll hear these FM slick preachers get on the radio and they'll say, well, when the Bible says fear God, we're not, it's, we're not supposed to be afraid of him we're supposed to just reverence him. Now, I believe the Holy Ghost has got enough sense to say fear when he means fear and reverence when he means reverence. I believe God's got enough sense to put in the Bible when he means reverence to say reverence, and I can prove that to you in the Bible. Take your Bible and turn to Hebrews chapter 12, and I want to show you a verse of Scripture here as I'm getting started this morning. Hebrews chapter number 12. Let me show you something. I'm going to show you one reason why you know that the word fear means fear and it means be afraid of. I looked it up in the dictionary. I didn't have to, but I did, just so you'd know it. It means to be afraid of. The number one definition of fear is to be afraid of. The most, about the fourth definition of the fear means a reverence like you'd have for a cop or a doctor or your parents or a school teacher or a parent. We have a reverence for them, of course we do. But the word fear means be afraid. That's the primary reason, re, meaning of the word fear. Look at Hebrews chapter 12. And in Hebrews chapter 12, look at verse 28. And I'm gonna show you a verse of scripture here where it says, wherefore we receive in the kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. There's both of them in the same verse. If godly fear means reverence, that's a weird verse. It says serve God with reverence and reverence. No, it said serve God with godly fear and reverence. So it's two different things. So as always, your King James Bible right and anybody who messes with it is wrong. Say amen right there. Now I'm gonna tell you this morning, that somebody had a, had a T-shirt. You might have one, nothing personal. These guys wear these T-shirts, no fear. I tell you what you ought to do. If you, write, if you wear a T-shirt like that, it ought to say no fear except God. You better fear God, buddy. You better fear God. You hear me this morning? One thing's wrong with our country this morning. We have lost our fear of God. And I'm gonna tell you this morning, it, it's, a, it's a, a dangerous thing. The Holy Ghost said to fear God and, and all the way through the Bible. Leviticus 19, 14. Leviticus 19, 32. Leviticus 35, 25, 17. Deuteronomy 6, 13. Deuteronomy 6, 24. Deuteronomy 10, 12. Psalm 2, 11. Psalm 2, 19, 9. Psalm 22, 23. Psalm 25, 14. And about a hundred other places. The Bible says, fear God. 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 The Lord Jesus looked at his name one time. He said, I say unto you, fear him. Fear him, which hath power to cast soul and body in hell. Though we are to fear God this morning. There's some things that we ought to do and there's some things that we ought not to do because we fear God. And what's wrong with our country this morning, we've, had it, we've, had, we've been brainwashed by this doctrine that God is just all love and all kind. People say, well, you're not supposed to be afraid of him. I've had people tell me, say, you're not supposed to be afraid of him. I mean, he loves us. A lady told me the other day, I mean, he loves us. 
I said, that's not the point, sister. He does love us. But I tell you, he still hates where I sin. And he still hates what I do wrong and what you do wrong. And he still punishes sin. And he still, people have this idea, well, he knew he was gonna sin anyway and God loves us. Now we've made God into this mushy sort of a grandpa who just overlooks everything. And I'm gonna tell you that book does not support that belief. That book said it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. The Bible said to fear God. You say, well, Brother Danny, I thought God was love. He is. You say, well, we're not supposed to be afraid of him. We are. We sure are. With, with reverence and godly fear. Well, let's look at this. What did Jesus say? You know what Jesus said? He said, friends, I say unto you, my friends. I say unto you, my friends. He said, I say unto you, my friends. Talking to his disciple. He said, fear not them which can kill the body, but after that have no more they can do. My friends. You know what I get from that? I get from that, if a man's your friend, he'll tell you the truth. If a man's your friend, he'll tell you the truth. Amen? If, if a man is not your friend, he'll tell you to do wrong. He'll tell you, but a real friend will be honest with you. A real friend will say, look, I love you. You know, people come to me all the time. Brother Danny, this uh, people come to me all the time. My teenager's rebelling. I, I talked to a lady on the phone this week who's not gonna let her teenager come to church tonight for a dumb reason. Ain't got nothing to do with me, ain't got nothing to do with the church, preaching, Bible, nothing. just a dumb reason. And I told her, I said, the devil, I, I know she probably didn't like it, and then she probably got mad, but I said, the devil is trying to knock your game. You know what? If I'm your friend, I'm gonna tell you the truth. He said, I say unto you, my friends. He didn't say, I'm gonna tell you something, friends. Live it up, eat, drink, and be merry. Have a good time. He wouldn't be their friend. If a man's your friend, he'll tell you to get it right with God. An enemy will say, here's the way you know you got an enemy at work. Let's go get drunk Thursday night. Let's go party Friday night. I'd get a divorce. I'd leave him so fast he'd make your head swim. The Lord didn't talk like that. He said, I say unto you, friends, fear not. If a man's your friend, he'll tell you the truth. If somebody's wanting you to go get drunk with them, they are not your friend. If somebody's wanting you to smoke pot, they are not your friend. If somebody's wanting you to drink liquor, they are not your friend. You say, well, my friend, they ain't your friend. He said, I say unto you, friend, get it right, get it right, do right. Jesus is your friend this morning because he ain't gonna cut you no slack. Because see, if a friend, if you ain't a friend, you don't care about that person. You just let them go on and get punished. A real friend will tell you the truth. A real friend will be honest with you. As a matter of fact, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. That means you got these atheists on TV, they're dumb. Richard Dawkins, Bill Maher, uh, Keanu Reeves, uh, uh, Angelina Jolie, all them people, you know what they are? Dumb, dumb. You say, oh, they're educated. Educated dumb's the worst kind of dumb they are. Amen. Uh, you don't get no dumber than an educated dummy. Uh, the Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. You say, how do you know they don't fear the Lord? Because the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. That's how I know. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And if you can't get to the place where you say, hey, this sin will get me in trouble. I fear God. You, you ain't even the first base yet. That is the beginning of wisdom. Old Dax over there, he started in kindergarten this week. And uh, he started, and I told Carrie, I said, man, you starting a long journey. Lord have mercy, you, it's gonna be a long time before you have a normal life again. I had kids in school. I think I had kids in school for 21 straight years. In private school, paid for every one of them to go. I, out of my pocket. And Lord have mercy, all the thousands of mornings. You gotta get up, get them a bowl of cereal, get them, get, get them dressed, I pick them up from school, help them with their homework, take a bath, take a shower. I mean, it seemed like it like, by the time they finally get here, too old to do anything, time that's over with. I, I, after you have kids, you, 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 you better enjoy them because that's your life. And, 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 uh, but anyway, and thank God it is, keep you out of trouble. Uh, but anyway, I tell you what, boy, uh, he started on a long journey, and they, they get those kids in there, and they'll say, let's make an A. Let's make an A. And if we're in the right kind of school, you know, they teach them phonics. Uh, uh, apple, boo, book, uh, cat, the uh, door. That's, that's proven the best way for kids to learn. Uh, but anyway, uh, they, they put them in there. Let's make an A. Let's make a B. All that. Well, when you learning in life, the beginning of wisdom is to fear God. If a man don't fear God, he ain't on first base. 
I don't care if he's got enough to graze the papa thermometer. I'm telling you, if he don't fear God, he ain't made it to first base. All right, I'm gonna talk about just for a minute on why you ought to fear God. You ought to fear God because your offense is great. Fear is the tax, conscience pays guilt. I, that's above your head. Fear is the tax, conscience pays guilt. You get scared. You get scared for what you've done wrong. You go break the lo local law, like I did the other night when that cop pulled me over, I got scared. I got scared, I'll be honest with you. I ain't one of these people say, oh, come on, cop, I'll punch you. No, uh uh, buddy. I got major respect for them guys. I mean, my future is in his hands. Amen. My pocketbook is in his hands. I'm scared of I, I'm scared of I mean, they go out there and, uh, yes, sir, yeah, whatever you say, sir. Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I'm telling you, that's just a local law. And if I'd have been charged with a crime and they'd have set me a date over there at the Burke County Courthouse, and I'd, I've never been charged with a crime. But if I had, buddy, I'll tell you, I would walk in there. I'd be cleaned up. I'd have on a shirt and tie. I'd sit there and behave myself. I'd say, yes, sir. I'd be scared just, in, just down there at that local judge. Then there's a level up above that if you was in federal court. I mean, some people charged with a federal crime where you go like the state uh, down in Raleigh somewhere or a federal court, and buddy, there's the judge. He's got your future in his hand. That's a scary thought. I'd be scared out of my wits if I had to stand there because of my offense. Then there's a Supreme Court of America when people, hey, you talk about scary. I mean, old Casey Anthony, don't you know, brother? She's scared, she was scared. I guess she's all right now. Uh, but anyway, I'm telling you all those people, you know, O.J. Simpson, everyone, you know they thought, oh boy, tomorrow's a big day. Tomorrow, it'd be scary. But you think about who we've offended. I'm not talking about the local law or the federal law or the Supreme Court judge. Brother, we have offended the God of the universe. We have offended the holy God. That judge that sits down there, he sinned too. He's a sinner just like us, we're scared of him. We have offended the holy God. Your lies, your, your cussing, your lying and your adultery and your drinking and your partying, you have offended God Almighty. Yeah. You better be scared. That's right. You ought to fear him because your offense is great. I've been to court with a lot of people. Them come in there like, oh, yeah. You know, the shirt and half off and showing off the tattoos and everything. I thought, man, you're a fool walking here like that. I'm gonna show some respect. I'm scared of that guy. He can put you in the slammer. And there's a lot of people like that about God. We had some boys going over there uh, one time to give out tracts over there at Bell Share. And they went over there and giving out tracts. And we got, walked to a boy over there and he said, I ain't scared of God. He said, when I see God, I'm gonna go up there and choke him on his throne. Well, that's like when them fools walking in court, like, uh, you ain't gonna do nothing to me. You can't scare me, just he can scare me. Yeah. We ain't got nothing to fear, but fear, you're crazy. You're crazy. Man. I'm if there's a rattlesnake right there, I would get in the Holy Ghost real quick. I'd handle him, amen. Like Billy Kelly said, the only way I handle snakes, ho handle them. <laughs> That's right. Uh, uh, listen, listen, brother. You, there's some things you ought to be scared of, and especially God. I'll tell you another reason you ought to fear God. You can avoid a lot of pain and suffering in your life if you'll fear God. Yeah. Yeah. I know boys right now have got a headache. I talked to a boy yesterday uh, in Jordan, out on, out on the bus route, and was talking to this boy trying to get him to come to church tonight. Uh, he, he, he had razor scars all the way down there where he had on a, on a tank top and he had razor scars all down there where somebody just cut him in a knife fight. Boy, wasn't 18 or 19 years old. Had scars, had all that. You know, you know why he's in a mess like that? Head beat in, no, uh, no fear of God. No fear of God. You get fear of God in you, it'll keep you out of places like that where you get beat up and where you wreck your car and drunk and getting in fights and all that. The fear of God 
the fear of God. The fear of God. So a lot of people stayed out of car wrecks because they had the fear of God. They said, oh, come on, man. Uh uh-uh, uh, I ain't getting in there. You guys are drunk. Oh, come on, chicken. And then they go off and get killed. And the fear of God kept that kid from getting in trouble. The fear of God is what kept you from getting on drugs. The fear of God is what kept you from smoking that joint or trying that crack cocaine or crystal meth or whatever. You know why you ought to fear God? It'll save you a lot of money, it'll save you a lot of time, a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. Amen? That's right. And then the third thing I'm going to say, and I'm going to spend a little time on this and I'm done. You know why we ought to fear God? Because of the power he has. That's what Jesus said. Fear not them which can kill the body, but after that I have no more they can do. You know what I found out about people who don't fear God? They fear people. The fear of man bringeth a snare. That's what the book says. You watch anybody who don't fear God, they're scared to death of what people's gonna say about them. I know teenagers that are more scared of their friends than they are God. There'll be some here tonight. Well, are you gonna go? I'm not gonna go. Are you gonna go? I'm not gonna go if you don't go. And I'm not gonna go if you don't. They're more afraid of what their friends, their peers think about them or standing out. They say, well, I'm not going, I'm not going to stand out in school. I want everybody to like me and I ain't gonna carry no Bible in there. They're, they're more scared of the, their, their friends than they are God. Listen, you better be scared of God more than you are. Fear not them, friends. All they can do is kill your body. That's the worst thing they can do to you is kill you. You say, Lord, I don't want to, nobody to kill me. I don't either. But that's all they can do. Fear not them when you just kill the body. You think about that statement Jesus made. That's a statement, people. Yeah. What's the worst thing in the world a person can do to another person? Kill them. The Lord said, don't be afraid of that. But that's all they can do. You know what he's saying? They something way worse than that. There's a hell below you this morning. You better fear the one which after your death can cast you in hell. Now that opens up all kind of doctrinal issues. Number one, it shows you that hell is not the grave. And the Jehovah Witnesses are led by the devil. And this is on the internet worldwide and it'll be on the radio. They are led by the devil. Man, it tells you, they said, well, hell is just the grave. No, it's not either. Jesus said, don't be afraid of somebody that can just kill your body and then that's all you can do. If that's all you can do is just die, who's, who's that? Who gets you after you're dead? You're pallbearers. That's what Jesus was saying. Don't be afraid if somebody stabs you in the heart and kills you. I'll tell you who you better be afraid of, them pallbearers that can put you in that grave. If the Jehovah's Witnesses are right, that's what he was saying. I guess that went right over most of y'all's head, but I ain't got time to wait on y'all to figure all this out. Uh, you need to think as fast as I can talk and listen to me. You, you hear me this morning? You hear me? Jesus was saying hell is a different place than the grave. The grave ain't hell. There's no such thing as soul sleep. Your soul don't never sleep. It's alive right now and will be forever and ever and ever. He said you better be scared of that person that can throw you in hell after you're dead. That's who you better fear. You better fear him, buddy. You say, I'm not going to live my life. Go take your choice. It's your, it's your life. I'm scared of him. Amen? He's got your life in his hands. You say, you're not supposed to be scared of your father. Yeah, you are too. I was scared of my daddy. I loved him and he loved me. But man, you can only push him so far, man. He'd knock you in the next week. And God hath power to cast you into hell into hell. Do you realize this morning there are people that are screaming in the fire right now that was out partying last night. They was out partying last night. Yeah, man, give me another drink. On the way home, bam. And they didn't fear God and God threw them in hell. Close this morning, this story. I told this story about a year ago. I'm telling you, it's on my heart. And somebody's here that's not saved. One of the strangest stories I've ever read was the story of Archibald Boyle. Archibald Boyle was an atheist. Not only was he an atheist, he was the like, vice president of a club that they had way like, back in the early 1800s called the Hell Club. 
and the Hell Club was a bunch of people that just got together and they had these annual meetings and they had contests of who could be the most blasphemous. And they just had debauchery and all kinds of sin. And they would have somebody stand up and he was a star of the show. He could tell funny stories. He had a brilliant mind. He could just have wit and he could just tell, and he had them all laughing about how there is no God and, how, and they'd done that every, every year. And he was a ladies' man. He was all cool. And, right, and he was a wicked, wicked, wicked man. One night after their meeting, he was on his way home. And he rode his horse home that night through the darkness. And he went home went to bed and went to sleep. And he had a dream. And he said he dreamed that night that he was riding his horse through the woods home. And he was dashing through the woods. And he said he came around a being like that and he said something come out of the darkness and grabbed him and seized him and held on to him like a being, an entity. And he said, who are you? Leave me alone. And it said, I've come to take you with me. He's dreaming this. And he got scared and he hit his horse like that and went through the woods and that thing was hanging on him like a demon. And he run through the woods and run through the woods and run, and it was hanging on him and he said, get away from me, get off me. He said, I'll not leave you, I'm taking you with me. I've come to take you with me. And finally he went around the curve and lost control of his horse and his horse fell off a bank and he was falling, falling, falling and he said he kept falling and kept falling and kept falling and that thing had his arms around him and he said, I'm taking you with me. He said, where are you taking me? He said, to hell. He said he got down there and these big old gates opened and when these gates opened, that thing had his arms around his neck and he said, welcome to hell, Mr. Boyle. And he said he looked in there and looked around and he saw faces. And he looked around and he said, there was Mrs. D, a girl he used to party with back on earth. And there were some people that he knew that had died. And he grinned and he said, oh, this is a devilish, pleasant little place. If this is hell, this is wonderful. There's Mrs. D. And about that time, said her chest opened up and there were snakes all in her body and she screamed, there is no rest in hell. And he jumped back and screamed. He said, next thing you know, these other things just turned into demonic faces and he could hear like heaven, hordes of people screaming, there is no rest, there is no rest in hell. And he said, get me out of here, get me out of here. And he looked at his guide and he said, I adjure you by the living God, get me out of this place. And the strange God said, you wouldn't, you blasphemed his name while you were up on earth and now you want him to help you. And they screamed, there is no rest in hell. And finally he took him out and he took him back up to earth and he said, I'll let you go, last chance. But he said, in a year and a day, we'll meet again to part no more in a year and a day. He said he went home, he was absolutely, when he woke up, he was just scared out of his wit. He didn't leave his house for days. He just stayed in the bed and laid there in sweat. And, and he said, hell he could hear is a year and a day. A year and a day. And he told some of his friends, he said, I had the most awful nightmare. He said, I dreamed, oh, that's silly, that's stupid. You know there ain't no such place as that. I'd get to get down in my, and he said, I'll never go back to the hell club again. I'm done with it. I've tried to change my life. All that. Well, as the year went on, he slowly, slid, little by little, slid back into his partying ways. And it come up time for the annual meeting. And some of his friends said, you gonna be at the meeting this, this Monday, ain't you? He said, no, I'm not coming, boys. I'm not coming. I'm done with that. Oh, come on, man. You're the life of the party. You're the best one. Come on. And they kept on and on and on. You know how people do you? He's afraid of them. He's afraid of them. You know how people do you. Come on, come on. Come on. No, no. You're trying to straighten up and do right? Your friend, come on. Come on, go, go with it. Come on. Come on. That's the way they do you, young people. Come on, go with it. Let's get drunk. Come on, come on. And finally, they talked him into it. And he said every nerve in his body felt like it was being torn out when he walked in that place that night. And he said he walked in that place that night, uh, that night like there, and there was all his friends, and he'd be going, <laughs> hey. 
and he took a drink and tried to get drunk and it, it didn't work and he just sort of laughed, fiendish laugh come out of his mind. He, he looked around and it got worse and he, he said the whole, he hated it the whole time. He's miserable. And he said what shocked him the most, the president got up and he said, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our annual meeting of the Hell Club. It's leap year, so it's been a year and a day since we met. He said fear shot through his body. But he sat down and he, what are you gonna do? He ain't gonna jump up and say, I'm, I'm gonna get saved. I gotta, he's too scared of them people around him. So he sat right there and listened. When that thing was over, son, he got on his horse, got out of there. They said, man, he's acting weird. What's wrong? Oh, he had a dream, crazy thing, and all that. And the next morning, they found his horse out grazing in the sunshine out there in the field somewhere with his saddle still on it and everything. And about 100 yards up the road in the ditch, a stiff body of Archibald Bowman. In a year and a day, that strange guide came to get him. And that story went down in the history. You know what his problem was? He didn't fear God, he feared man. Now you know what Jesus said? He said, don't be afraid, don't be afraid of them people you work with. Don't be afraid of somebody can just mess you up. You better fear him. That after you're dead can decide where you go, heaven or hell. I say unto you, fear him. What I just got through preaching to y'all is 100% against the world's philosophy. What I just got, I'm like, I'm like they said Martin Luther one time, they said Martin Luther, the whole world's against you. And he said, okay, I'm against it. Yeah. Where one man with God is a majority. If I'm saying what's right, the whole world go jump in the lake if God says it. And I'm going to tell you folks something here tonight and this morning and tomorrow night and the next night and the next night, you better put your fear where it needs to be. You better fear God. Right. Quit trifling. Quit playing with Him. If you fear God, you straighten up. The fear of the Lord. Beginning of wisdom. I want you to stand with your heads bowed. Nobody's moving. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. Nobody's moving. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. The Holy Spirit of God is working in here this morning. Somebody needs to get saved. If you're here this morning, you've never been saved. Why don't you get saved this morning, kid? Mama? Daddy? Teenager? If you're here this morning, you say, Brother Danny, I know I've been saved, but I'm not living like I need to live. Brother Danny, I know that I need to get right with God. Please pray for me. Would you let us pray for you this morning? Just slip up your hand, take it right back down. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, hands all over the building. I don't know how many hands are lifted up. Fear him, which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Get in this altar this morning. Come on, get in this altar this morning. Christians, get in this altar. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for your family. We need to pray a fear of God on people. There ain't no people. It seems like people don't fear God no more. I'm not talking about, we're not supposed to walk around scared he's gonna knock our heads off, but I'm telling you, you better respect God and his power. He has power. He has power. Father, do what ought to be done in our hearts this morning. Save that one which is lost. Lord, don't let them leave here this morning lost without God. Save them by your grace this morning. We'll praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen, amen. We're singing, we're singing. You come right now. Come on, join the. Just as Amen. I amen. That's right. But come on, young man. Amen. Come on, come on. Get this song in this morning. Just get out of your seat. Come on. Come on, girls. Come on, right now. Come on.
Finishing up praying, I'm going to ask everybody who will. I don't know if football's on TV yet or not. I have no idea. But whatever you've got planned to do, watch TV, golf, or take a nap, you've got plenty of time. I'm going to ask everybody that will go in the bedroom, closet, somewhere, take the phone off the hook, whatever, and pray for an hour. We got bus workers. This don't include the bus worker unless you got time. Most of y'all don't have time. For all the rest of us, I'm going to be back here at 5. We need all the kids here at 5.30 in the little class from 3 to 10 years of age. You don't want to miss tonight. Tonight may be the most important service we've had all year. Maybe They sold their souls for rock and roll. That'll be tonight at 6 o'clock. You pray for me. We've got a lot of new stuff that's been updated. And all kinds of things can go wrong when you try something like this. So please pray. Uh, they're going to be here early with the camera and stuff set up. And it'll be on video and it'll be on the internet all over the place this, this week. And so I understand that's important. So please pray for me. Uh, and get go call somebody. Go out in your community. Bring your neighbor's kids. Feel this place full tonight. It's going to be exciting. And uh, we're going to have some good stuff for the kids back to school. All right? We will have the nursery. 